Well, this is something else that I really think that we should be paying attention to. And this is in regards to China and just what China are preparing for. Now, this article appears on the Extinction Protocol and was published on the 12th of January 2013. And it's saying that China is mysteriously stockpiling rice and other commodities. Now, we already know that China have been building these massive ghost cities that span for hundreds of miles and actually have nobody living or working within them. Now, my thoughts are that this has been to create a sense of growth, a sense of extreme growth in China which has spurred the Western corrupted governments who only exist through greed to latch on to this astronomical growth that China has been experiencing and really begin to rely on China's growth for their own economy. And we can see this particularly in Australia with our resources industry, which we now depend on to ensure that our economy is running in a prosperous way. However, there is a two-speed economy over in Australia because although we are benefiting from the resources sector, it's truly only a few that do benefit from the mining industry. Other industries such as manufacturing, tourism and retail are suffering terribly. And you know, people are doing it pretty tough over here in Australia, just as they are over in America and over in the UK and of course over in parts of Europe. Now, China could decide at any moment to really start winding down their economic growth. And China has a big enough population that they can sustain their own economy. They really only import very little in way of product because they can actually create their own products and their own economy. So once China puts the brakes on importing more resources, then Australia is going to falter. And because Australia, like America, and the UK and other countries have shifted the majority of their manufacturing offshore, then we don't even have that to rely on should these other sectors of our economy begin to fail. So China is very smart, very manipulative, and has played the Western governments for the greedy, arrogant, and very unintelligent terrorists that they are because they really are one trick ponies and they really are not very smart and China is very intelligent and you know quite often I see people uh, making comments that China has made this big mistake and they are going to really suffer and you know that's really just illusion because you know I have stated before you know with my own business I work with uh, Chinese people quite often you know, I'm, I'm always regularly interacting with Chinese uh, suppliers. And, you know, these people are not unintelligent when it comes to anything to do with money and business. They are very savvy and they will extract the last penny from you. Sometimes you even wonder why it's worth they go to such lengths to make sure they get that last penny, but they do. I have seen this behavior repeatedly. So, I know that China does everything for a reason and they have plagued the West for many, many years and they have waited for just the right time to move forward with their own plans. And so I do believe that that is going to entail war and we will probably see China get very aggressive with Japan and this will be very interesting since Japan is an ally of America. It will be very interesting to see America's response to this attack on Japan. 
Other people have also commented to me that, you know, you don't want to take on America, you know, we're, you know, really heavily armed and China, you know, is worried. Seriously, China has Russia as an ally, has Iran as an ally, okay, Afghanistan, India. People need to understand that America is not the country it was 20 years ago. Your terrorist governments have eroded your prosperity, have moved your jobs offshore at your detriment, and they really did not care. They have allowed the banks to move in and foreclose on your homes. And what happened? They then bailed the banks out. So, you know, the governments do not care about the people. That's the last thing they care about. The people are only there to serve them. So when the people become a threat, then they are treated as the enemy. And we are now seeing they are moving forward to disarm the American people. This is the next part of their plan. Now, this is because there are a couple of things about to play out. Firstly, we have the economy, the American economy, which is just basically an illusion that is in its last days because it's all about to fold in on itself and it is a basket case. There is no way Americans can ever repay the debt that they owe. There is no way America can sustain uh, the way that they are presently being, uh, you know, governed with uh, in, in regards to the financial sector. There is just no way that America is going to get itself out of this. They have totally corrupted the system for their own benefit and their greed. They have disenfranchise their own people, and this is about to play out. Now, unfortunately for those of us who have woken up, we still look around us and see the sleeping zombies that are really happy to suck up the circuses and the illusion of reality as it's rolled out for us by those with an agenda, because reality isn't how we live right now. And uh, if you believe that reality is going to work every day to pay bills, then seriously, I really pity you. And I would strongly suggest you try to move beyond that programming because that's what it is. That's just programming and that is just a mentality that is the result of you being conditioned to believe that this is reality and that we can't live without money and we can't live without government and we can't live without, you know, going to work and existing on the planet in the way that we do when in actual fact the way we exist on this planet is so unnatural that it's just not going to be sustained universally it's not going to be sustained because we are part of a greater system and we are a virus and we are out of control so you know cosmically that will be righted just as when we have a virus invade our body uh, the body then works to remove that virus and rebalance itself there's no difference when we look at our planet in the way that this works our planet will remove us and the sun will help her remove us and the galactic center will help the sun help her remove us. I mean, we need to start seeing the bigger picture here. We need to be the frogs that actually jump out of the pond and see the world for what it is and see the universe and existence and our place within it for what it is instead of being the frog at the bottom of the pond, only looking up and seeing that as our whole world because that's the way we've been conditioned. So we need to understand that economically, financially, America is about to fall. Uh, the EU is going the same way, the UK and Australia. We are all about to experience a complete catastrophe in regards to our financial sectors. They are all going to implode on themselves because they are all now at the last end you know, the last part of playing out the system. It was never created to be an infinite system. It was always finite. And when you have these greedy pricks with the only goal of making as much money in as a short in as short amount of time as they can, then you're going to see it exhausted before its time. Maybe it would have lasted twenty more years, but the rate that they have been plundering 
the blade and you know plundering the planet to extract as much from her that they can flog off to the highest bidder well really we've come to the end of the road very quickly and it's going to happen very abruptly so that's the first thing that the United States government is currently preparing for the massive uh, civil unrest that this financial uh, shit fight is about to bring about. The second thing is exactly what China is now preparing for, and that is food shortages. Because we have basically had uh, crop failures all around our world, our planet, for the last three, four years consistently, crop failures, one after another. We had Russia last year experiencing massive crop failures. We've had China experiencing in the them years ago, though they're not experiencing them now, you know, there are areas of the world that have been affected by weather events that could not yield any product from their crops. Uh, you know, farmland has been destroyed. So this is going to add up, and it has, you know, and it will. I mean, they have stockpiles, they have a food bank, but that is not infinite, you know, and they've already been, you know, using the food banks. So I think China knows exactly what's about to go down, and they're preparing. And I think it also has a lot to do with, uh, you know, war, which is going to hinder uh, trade between the countries and, and exporting and importing of food and livestock. And, uh, you know, a lot of countries now, like even our country in Australia, we now import a lot of our fruit and vegetables and we've sold off a lot of our farmland for housing. So this is really going to come back to bite us because... We now don't have the ability to feed our own countries because we've been, you know, we've basically relied on other countries, uh, third world mainly countries, that uh, grow these crops at very cheap prices and then we import them. And of course, you know, everyone's on a budget, so, you know, we're going to buy food that's cheap. We've got families to feed and we've got rents to pay and bills to pay. So, you know, people need to live people need to survive so you can't blame people for not buying the ten dollar a kilo bananas because they want to buy the imported ones for two dollars a kilo and they need to feed their children so you know this is what it comes down to and unfortunately this is just part of the problem uh, that is just feeding on itself is that we are existing on food that's being imported from other countries. So we don't even have that anymore. When these food shortages start to hit, we aren't even going to be able to rely on our own farmers. Also, a lot of the farmland has been now used for fracking. They've destroyed groundwater and poisoned everything. So, you know, you really couldn't even basically rely on the food in those areas. I mean, I would be very wary of eating any food that comes from an area that has gas fracking, uh, you know, and gas extraction happening. So I think this is what we're seeing here with China. I think that uh, they know that uh, the shit is about to hit the fan and you know they need their soldiers to be strong so they can fight, so they have to feed them. There is not going to be time for people to go out into the rice paddies and farm because they're going to need all of their people to be helping them uh, with war. Uh, all hands on deck, you know, it'll, you know, it'll be all of them coming together. They do this China, you know, for the coming war that is about to basically play out. I mean, I know a lot of people don't want to believe World War III is coming. I'm sorry to tell you, regardless of what you believe, it's happening. It's going to happen. It's already starting. They're already positioning themselves. They have been for the last 12 months. So it's only a matter of time now. And I think we will basically know when it's all about to start when we see China and Japan begin in conflict. So anyway, I wanted to post this article underneath, but I also wanted to post some other articles in regards to uh, food shortages. I've got this one here, 2013 will be a crucial year for food and agricultural supply chains. And this one here, the hoarding of uh, food could cause, uh, you know, yeah, Food shortages could cause nations to hoard stocks. Sorry about that, guys. Okay, so I will link all the articles underneath. And once again, I'm running out of time. I've only got 15 minutes, so I will finish here. And, of course, as always, guys, peace out.